Welcome to Psionic Aftermath. I'm Xenodactyl, your host, and today we are bringing the ATL Alpha Team League. It is the playoffs, quarterfinals between Rise Esports and Psy X. Up first, we will have a uh, PVT on Acid Plant. Uh, looks like uh, everyone's just getting situated, and we will be underway shortly. Just uh, while we're waiting for things to get started, some information, I suppose. Um, first game will be Acid Plant, uh, as I mentioned. It will be a PVT between Jedrix and Future. Uh, second game will be on 16-bit. That will be Siegfried versus Heino. Uh, PVZ. And then, third game will be on Catalyst. Uh, ZVT between Cham Cork and uh, Psych. And then, if needed, a fourth game will be Cuddle Bear and Ravage. A PVT again on Lost and Found. And the last map, should it come down to the ace match, will be Darkness Sanctuary. Alright, looks like players have started, and we are loading into Acid Plant. And spawning in the bottom right. As the blue Protoss representing Psyx, it is Jeterex. And in the opposing corner, representing Rise Esports, it is the Red Terran Future. Uh, just some quick thoughts. Um, I know Jeterix likes this map. He's not uh, not opposed to it, uh, at least in this matchup, from what I understand. Uh, this is also um, probably his best matchup. However. Uh, this is future we're talking about. Uh, he's a very solid Terran. Um, he hasn't really had the results that I know of, at least recently, that we expect from someone of his caliber. But he is no doubt a contender for um, those uh, top-level uh, foreigner scene tournaments, uh, at, at least in the local scene. Like, he's not like... Like, I don't know. It, it, it's kind of hard to exactly gauge where he is because I, I don't, um, I don't follow him that closely. But uh, anyway, he's gonna start out with a Reaper expand, and I mean, it, it's not like Jedrix hasn't had his, um, his, uh, his moments, shall we say? But. Uh, I, I think all, all I mean by this is there there's a kind of at least mismatch from the uh, basic on look in uh, but uh, I mean this is a matchup Jedrix is very comfortable in and he's gonna 
do his thing. So we're gonna see that Reaper come out. Um, oh, or not. Where is it? Yes, it is. Okay. I'm not crazy. Uh, and the Adept is here. The Reaper, did the Reaper even go anywhere? No. The Reaper is just scouting for, uh, like, a Zealot first opening. Or a proxy. And uh, it's gonna go across the map now at the uh, three minute mark. Um, this kind of makes sense for this map. Like, the Reaper wasn't really going to get much done in the main. Uh, as there's not uh, really a Reaper ledge, and uh, with the two adepts here now, the Reaper is lost. First blood goes. Well, actually, uh, the first the probe died too, so never mind that. Um, all in all, uh, things are pretty normal so far this game. Cyclone is just kind of checking, doing his due diligence, making sure there is no funny business coming out of Jeterix. And, uh, looks like we're gonna start with, uh, 211 of some sort. Um, not seeing that star port just yet. Or is it? Uh, no. We're gonna get a tank, but, uh, yeah, still no starport. Uh, Observer is out for Jeterix, uh, so maybe he has something else other than... Yeah, he's not really cranking out the marines either, so... Just kind of, uh... Fast... Uh, okay, we're... it's three racks. Uh, so, clearly bio, but other than that, I'm not really sure where Future wants to take this game just yet. Um, he does have the siege tank, and the observer is going to uh, park itself kind of at the front, uh, outside the vision of the um, missile turret. And stalkers are going to move out for Jedrex now that we have passed the window of the mine drop. And uh, we're going to see a lot of observers coming out of Jeterix. He really wants to get, gain that map vision so that his stalkers can always be in position to punish any Terran movement. Uh, that said, he's going to kind of... He wants to poke, but uh, with the tank and the bunker here, he has to be really careful. I think he lost a stalker, yep. And... Um, he's taken more than a little bit of damage on that. Okay. Observer is picked off with the scan. Um, and Bunker will be salvaged as uh, Future is thinking about moving out across the map. He, he kind of wants to do some sort of push, I feel. And uh, he's going to have some medevacs reinforcing this. Jeterix is going to kind of kite with his stalkers, blinking away, chipping at the marines. Uh, he really wants to get some siege... Uh, he wants to force some sieges on the tank if he can. But he uh, doesn't have a whole lot of stalkers here at this point in time. Over here, um, Jeterix does have uh, another force, um, and he, he's been warping in uh, as he chips away at the Terran army. This Terran army actually doesn't really have a whole lot of places to go uh, with, actually, um, good drop by future. Uh, forcing a lot more uh, attention out of uh, Jeterix, and at the same time Jeterix is going to attack the natural, but uh, Future is over here at the third as well. This is getting really hairy. Um, all the production for Jeterix is currently uh, not available as the 
pylons have been unpowered. This drop has been cleaned up for the moment, uh, and pylons are going to, uh, to replace that. The third is picked off by this uh, other prong, and the harass or pressure or attack, I'm not even sure at this point, from Jetterix is uh, been cleaned up at the cost of 24 workers. Uh, meanwhile, the push from Future is still advancing on the natural. There's not a whole lot left, but uh, with the drop coming back into the main and picking off those pylons again, Jetterix is having a little bit of difficulty defending. He's really only got one stalker and a zealot here to defend. This is such a scrappy game all of a sudden. This drop has come back and uh, it, it's still getting some damage. Probes are being pulled, but uh, with the medevac here, they can't really get anything done. Uh, the drop has finally been dealt with, and now the, these forces are going to swing down to the natural. Uh, hopefully Jetterix can save this, but 15 probes have all gone down in this time. Uh, the front pylon is gone, uh, which is going to make this kind of sticky as uh, those bunkers, if they complete... Uh, okay, there's only one tank, and that does get picked off. Uh, the medevac is going to lift, swing around to somewhere. Okay. it's It wants to drop from the kind of backstab the natural, but I don't think it's going to find that opening. Instead, it's going to swing over to the main. Uh, there's not a whole lot here right now, but um, Future is on the retreat with his frontal force, uh, and some Zealot Stalker has been warped in. This isn't too bad. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's a really scrappy game. <laughs> Uh, I think he cleaned up this drop. I don't see it. Um, but, uh, here we have the Stalker Zealot pushing the front. Uh, there's enough bio here that Jetterix is going to turn around. And, uh, I, I guess the game stabilizes from here. Um, hmm. Wow, that was really explosive all of a sudden. Marine gets picked off. A couple probes going down to this drop of one Marauder. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, there is still some Stalkers here, but uh, not a whole lot of charge lots to support that. Um, this drop was cleaned up, I think. And uh, Jetterix is going to take his third, or retake his third at the other location. Um, I, I don't know what prompted this decision, or if it was just like, I don't know, Liberator is out, uh, or actually two Liberators are out, and uh, there's actually a healthy mine count here. Jadrix has to be kind of careful as how he engages, because if those, oh that was a nice blink, <laughs> um, uh, I don't know how you hold this third Jadrix. Um, okay. Uh, Jetterix certainly has an advantage if he holds this third, but the push potential for these mines and liberators is very strong. And, uh, okay, Jetterix is going to abandon this third now. So he, he will give that up. Uh, Storm is almost complete, and that can be a real tide turner, but, uh, Future is going to pick up and Doom Drop the main, and that may cut off Jetterix from his objectives. Ah. Uh, Jetterix is going to at least get these mines here that wanted to walk into the natural, but how do you get over here? You're losing all your production. Uh, Storm is done, I guess, but. Oh, man. Uh, mines have not yet fired. One will go off on the stalkers. One storm goes down. It is decent, but now the bio is splitting. Uh, Jetterix, okay, he has enough to clean this up, I believe, but he's lost so much by now. 
and uh, Future will be forced to leave, but uh, this is really all Generix has. It's this uh, this army. That that that's it. I mean, he has no production. Okay, he might have a storm soon. It's not quite ready yet. Uh, so if he can buy some time for that... Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, Jedrix will tap out. Uh, eh, that was... really explosive. I, I don't even know how, how to process that. It was just everything, everywhere. <laughs> Both players um, really uh, taxing each other's APM. And, um, future coming out on top. Whew. What a game. What a game. Hmm, so, up next is going to be... Hino versus Siegfried. I'm told Siegfried is a good player. I do not know how he plays very much. Um, okay. He might be doing... Uh, given this is a PVC, rumor has it he might... Um, just making sure everyone's... Like, we're all good to go. I believe we shall get started on this PVZ. What map is this? 16-bit. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Huh. I don't know how he's going to want to handle this. I was going to say that being 16-bit, or uh, being a PVZ, I know that I've seen Siegfried do, uh, like the Cannon Rush Immortal Shield Battery, but this is not a map that it is commonly done on. You can make it work here, don't get me wrong, but, um, yeah, let me introduce the players and I'll see how this game develops. Spawning in the top right as the blue zerg representing Psy X, it is Hino. And in the opposing corner, representing Risen, it is the orange Protoss Siegfried. Okay, so he's going to open standard um, so far. <laughs> uh, probably going to see a Stargate opener. Um, yeah. Ah. 
Nice spray. And, uh, yep, okay. Gate gas nexus. Hatch gas pool. All standard openers. Hmm, did we get lag for, like, half a second there? Not entirely sure. At any rate. Looks like uh, both players just deciding uh, gentleman's agreement. No cheese. At least so far. And uh, Overlord is going to come in Look for some scouting information if there is any to be found. Uh, it's about time for that Stargate. Yep, there it goes. And Hino is going to see this. So, as far as Hino is concerned, there are no weird things afoot. I'm trying to get that pylon block on that third, but it will be denied by the Lings, and Hino will expand undisturbed. Adept is out. Uh, it's gonna shade, looking for some information. Uh, now it, we enter that part of the game where it's Siegfried's turn to confirm that he is in fact playing a normal game. Uh, the probe movement or drone movement did imply that uh, Hino wanted to take a third, but. Uh, Oh, he's actually just going to recall. Okay. I'm not asking for a pause. Oh. Are we on the right? <coughs> no. Okay, so both of them are suffering from some ping, I guess. Uh, it was set up on West Coast somehow. But, uh, neither of them caring to resume from replay. Lings are going to come up to this front. The Oracle is out, though, so these Lings are not going to... They probably shouldn't stay here. Oh, well, the Oracle hasn't actually turned on its energy, so that's not too much. <laughs> this is kind of this, like, awkward, like... Um, both of them kind of just, like, s sitting there. Uh, Phoenix is gonna come out, uh, kill this, uh, overlord. And, uh, Twilight is down for Siegfried, so this is likely a Glaive's, uh, opener into a third. But, uh, that is, of course, not the only thing this could be. There are a number of them. Um, oh, it's actually charge. Hmm. Okay, maybe Archon drop then? Siegfried has uh, pushed back the Lings. So, we will... Third now as the Protoss. Um, 
Is my game sound not on? Oh, it's not on. Or music's not on, I mean. Couple Phoenix are out. Um, gonna get a drone for their troubles. Wings are kind of checking the front here. But, um, not really getting much done. And, uh, what is Hino doing? Okay. He's gonna get a Hydralis den. He has roaches. Not on the map yet, but, um, uh, gonna take that fourth now. Uh, I think. Maybe. Yeah, okay. It is queued. And just kind of working on these rocks, opening up some space for himself. Phoenix is scouting around the map. And a nice wall going up for Siegfried, um, kind of creating this choke, uh, simplifying his Protoss defense. Phoenixes are going to come back around. Uh, gonna find themselves a nice drone. Hydras are out and uh, they will pick off a phoenix, so uh, no more random drone lifts. Uh, Storm is just now completing, as well as Glory Reconstitution. So those roaches will move a little bit faster and get stormed. Bit unfortunate. Uh, I know. I know has a decent. Um, like, he's teching pretty well, so... We'll see where this game goes from here. Uh, a couple more gateways are going to go down for Siegfried. Okay, now the groove spines are starting. And, uh... Sig... Or Hino is going to move across the map to uh, shut down this fourth, I presume. Uh, Siegfried has a couple storm, or actually a handful of storms, but uh, doesn't really have the rest of the ground force to utilize those storms. Um, he has one Archon, good storm, or good first storm. But there's not really a whole lot of charge lots here, so without too many charge lots or immortals, uh, Hino kind of has the advantage at the moment. Uh, he's gonna keep chipping, chipping away at these buildings. Storm is keeping him at bay. He's in danger of losing a good chunk of his forces if he eats another storm. Uh, he does eat another storm, but uh, not the. <laughs> It was on the other half of his army, so he actually hasn't lost that much yet. Uh, he's gonna have to run away now as the charge lots are here and the immortal count is climbing. Uh, this Pushing into this third is really dangerous, but Hino is gonna go for it again. Uh, I think he should swing around to the fourth. I, I don't think he should keep pushing this third. I'm not sure if he realizes that Siegfried has snuck a probe over to this side. Uh, at last he is going to back up, regroup, and come at Siegfried again another day. Uh, he has some static D going down at this fourth, and his worker count has gotten up to that healthy 80-ish. Uh, it's fluctuating, but uh, it, it is it is there, and <laughs> at this point, we are looking at a fourth for Siegfried, uh, just now completing with some static defense, a uh, shield battery couple cannons, um, and a fifth is going to go down for Hino. Uh, 
I'd like to see Hino spread his creep a little bit more. It's not. Obviously, the rest of your macro matters. Probably more so. But, um... I think... Had he a little more... Creep, he would see this army already. Uh, looks like we got a lag spike for a second. Hopefully, whatever the issue is, disappears quickly. Oh, I forgot to do the score. Uh, it is one for Siegfried. Siegfried is knocking at this, uh, at this door. Lurkers are here, though. I don't think Siegfried should push into that. That's a concave into Lurkers. Not a smart idea. And Siegfried agrees. He's going to swing around. Uh, lurkers are moving. Uh, they're not burrowed just yet, but there are a lot of Lurkers here. And now that they have burrowed, uh, Siegfried is going to back off. I know, preempting the anticipated swing around, but Siegfried was macroing, uh, so his army has not yet uh, pushed into this location. It will do that now ish. Uh, I don't know why he's. Hmm, that was kind of interesting. He's. posturing for something, but, uh. Okay, there are Corruptors out, so... Uh, the next... Okay, there's gonna be some charge lots over there. Uh, carriers are in production for Siegfried. And with the carriers... Um, it kind of puts a clock on Hino if he wants to go for a Broodlord timing. Um, he does have that... Um, Greater Spire down, complete. Um, roaches are going to swing around to this third. This is more to free up supply than to get damage, I feel, as Hino is maxed, and uh, he really does need uh, to get better tech. Uh, I hope he saw that mothership. I'm not sure he did, but I hope he did. Uh, for his sake, that would be an important piece of information. Uh, there is this war prism here. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I'm sure there is an explanation <laughs> as to why we have all of this. I mean, there, there's nothing wrong with having this much static D. It, it's just really funny to look at. Um, yeah, th 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 there is a reason. I, I'm just not 100% sure I know what was warped in that triggered this. Uh, lurkers burrowing. Um, charge lots are going to die. A uh, little bit unfortunate for our Protoss, but not too concerning. And Hino is going to push into this uh, kind of spot between the fourth and the fifth, which is really nice as he can zone out the Protoss, but with um, very limited. If this Overseer dies, uh, I don't know how Hino is going to handle this. Uh, he does, um, I guess, shoo away the Protoss force uh, from his army as he's regrouping. But now we're kind of getting into this very surgical song and uh, like uh, moment where. Um, the armies really have to be careful how they engage. Storms are going to blanket all of the Zerg force, and I don't know about this. Uh, Mothership is still here, and there's a Tempest. Uh, 
gosh. Zerg has lost nearly their entire ground force, and really only cleaned up the static defense of the Protoss. Uh, not really accomplishing much else. Uh, behind this, Hino has um, gotten more stuff. <laughs> more Zerg. Um, namely, the big thing is the Corruptors. That will allow him to uh, snipe some of this Protoss air, but uh, I think he wants some Spellcasters, or else this might, uh, might uh, go the way of our first game. Here we have a 6 going down for Hino. I... You know, when Zerg is taking their 6th slower than the Protoss, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I get a little bit nervous at that point for the Zerg. Uh, Snipes 1, uh, 2 carriers in fact. gonna get another one. Carrier count is falling rather fast. Broodlords are uh, pretty well protected. Is I know doing it? Uh, he's he's gonna have to back off. Uh, there's still a lot of interceptors. Uh, he, he's just losing corruptors too fast. Uh, that that was good that he got that damage, I guess. But mm, he he really needs more. I'm not sure how he's going to get that without a sp some spellcasters to assist. Um, be it fungals, be it, uh, like, something. Uh, some yoinks. Um, Parasitic bomb, even. Okay, Siegfried is going to swing around to this f um, fourth for Heino again. And this time, I don't know how Heino stops him. Uh, he has a very good, or very good, uh, he has a spore forest. Uh, a, a handful of spores. But that's not really gonna cut it. Okay, he has some vipers. And that, oh, but the feedbacks. And suddenly, all the spell casters for Hino are rendered inert, if not dead. Some of them are dead, I'm sure. Um, Alright, well, he loses the fourth. Not, not too surprising, I think. Once he saw those... Uh, feedbacks go off. I don't, I don't think he was anticipating holding that anymore. Uh, his revelations have been really nice for Siegfried, really uh, allowing him to clear the map and uh, get da uh, free damage value out of his Tempest. And Siegfried is going to swing around to this uh, location between the two bases, and I think he's going to have a lot easier time uh, punishing the Zerg for allowing him into this position than, uh, than Hino was able to when he was in the opposing side on the map. Uh, just using his Sky Force to zone out the Zerg while his Stalkers um, go to town on this uh, exposed expansion. And behind this uh, Siegfried is even going to take his seventh base, so um, uh, we do see a good fungal, but uh, it's so little, it, it doesn't get a whole lot for him. Like, fungal is great, don't get me wrong, but by itself it, it doesn't, it's not, it's not sufficient. Uh, and Hino knows all of this, I'm sure, he's just trying to solve this puzzle, and I, I, I don't know how you solve this puzzle. <laughs> um, 
maybe he needs some counter-aggression. Um, but there's a lot of static D at these um, bases. The Immortal is going to go to town on these uh, spine crawlers and ha it gets the hatchery even. Uh, nice yoink! Uh, going to get rid of that mothership. Storms go down. Um, I just don't know how. Okay, a recall is forced as uh, the trade is starting to go back in the Zerg's favor. So that that is that is something uh, for Hino. He's at least sent Protoss home. Um, so like the tempo advantage. For Siegfried is at least parried. <laughs> I can't even say it's neutralized. It, it, the tempo still goes to him. Like right now, right now, Siegfried can just sit. He doesn't have to do anything. This is Zerg's problem. Uh, Zerg is up, or uh, Zerg is behind uh, more than a base. Um, And Protoss can just start banking and, like, refine Sky Toss. Get more carriers, more storm, more... Like, he can just slowly trade out all of his dross, if he has any left. Okay, like these stalkers. <laughs> uh, where are the upgrades? Uh, I mean, okay, Protoss does not have 3-3 three, three air. <laughs> that That is the, um... One saving grace, I guess. Um, but, uh... It, it looks like death is approaching, and... Uh, I know is trying to stay alive. Another storm does go down, uh, really removing everything there, and Hino will tap out. There's the GG. Next map will be Catalyst. It's gonna be Cham Cork versus Psyche. Cham Cork has another name, but I don't recall what it was. Maybe it will dawn on me. At some point. Is Cham Cork Vindicta? Uh, my memory is so fuzzy. No, can't be Vindicta. Vindicta is Terran. Zergar there. Or... I don't know. Anyway, spawning in the bottom right as the orange Terran representing Psy X. It is Psyche! And in the opposing quarter, the Zerg who's alternate ID I cannot recall. It is Rises Chamcork. I know he has another ID. 
I just don't remember what it is. <laughs> this is gonna bug me until, for, for like the next five minutes while the stream is catching up and you guys figure it out. <laughs> or you guys could be mean to me and just never tell me. Then it'll be bugging me for like the next day. <laughs> until I forget. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, was this gas first? Where am I going crazy? I think I'm going crazy. I don't think it was gas first. I don't know. I, 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 my, my game sense is off. Um, I was paying attention well. Anyway, I was so distracted by, uh, by the cham cork thing. I, I don't even know if this is a normal opening. I think it is a normal opening. It looks normal. This reaper feels normal. Um, I think this is just a Reaper expand. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's just a Reaper expand. I think I'm just going crazy. I mean, I'm already crazy, but you guys know what I mean. <laughs> okay, so Reaper is going to uh, come over to this third base. Uh, looking for the drone that would be coming over right now, but uh, that drone has not yet been sent. And uh, there are Lings, a queen. Oh, Chamcork is Nistic. Thank you. <laughs> it's like, the name sounded so familiar, I just couldn't place it. Okay, Nistic. Are we getting some lag? Or is it just... Okay. Guess not. Speed is now done. And, uh... There's not yet a third for, uh... Cham Cork. He's actually starting a lair right now. So... There could be some sort of aggression. Or this could just be a... Okay, this might just be a late third. I don't know. Uh, maybe this is, like, Roach style. I know that can kind of hit a little bit late-ish. For Or the, the third can be a little bit later, I think. I don't know. My, my uh, knowledge of ZVT is not... Not exactly a strong suit. Um, I mean, it, it's better than TVT, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. For those of you that uh, don't know anything about me, I, I am a Protoss mean, so... Um, anyway, these lings are going to swing around, look for that third base, see if there's anything to get done while these Hellions are going to push in. Okay, we're just going to see that Hydroden. So, uh... Just kind of taking a third really safe, I guess. And the Lings actually do find their way uh, past this wall. Mystic is going to almost get the Viking. <laughs> Not every day you see Lings nearly kill a Viking. Um, but the Hellions are going to come back to uh, deal with this. Alright, some uh, spore crawlers being forced by these Hellions. Uh, Hydras are, are shooting. 
pewing, spitting, spitting. <laughs> uh, and uh, Hellions are going to back off. Third is now complete, or nearly complete. Uh, we'll have to be f flown over to the uh, location. But there, there's a pretty strong Hydra force um, knocking at this Terran front door. Uh, there is two tanks, or there are two tanks out, though. So they're going to turn around, um, not wanting to have any of that. Uh, actually, there are three tanks. <laughs> so definitely the right call. Go home. Go home, Hydras. You're drunk. Uh, these Hellions did find their way into this uh, mineral line. They do find themselves nine drones. Ten, in fact. Uh, one still alive. Looking for that last drone. We'll get. We'll get both of them actually. So that's not too bad. Oh, yes, score. I keep forgetting to do the score. Oh, no, that's not right. Yes, okay, we're good? I think we're good. Okay. Psych is loading up those uh, two medevacs. And, uh, he's gonna drop his marines into the main, it looks like. Setting up his siege tanks at third. Creep tumors are, uh, getting across the map pretty well. Oh, nice. It's a little sweet spot of no vision for uh, Mystic is going to cost him a little bit. At least a queen and a spore crawler, uh, if not some drones. Uh, he does have his hydras coming back, so I this escape path may be difficult. Uh, already losing one medevac, and the other is going to have to tuck itself away in the corner and pray that uh, nothing can find it. Another pair of medevacs are going to zip across, but there, uh, there is creep here. Uh, a couple hydras still at the main, waiting for that medevac to return to society, where it will spit on them. Uh, really clearing that creep now is Psyche trying to limit the Zerg vision and push potential defensive capabilities, all those things that creep does for the zerg. Lots of scans going down to uh, accommodate uh, Sykes' cleanup job. Uh, but the Ling Hydra force is here now, and will push this back. Meanwhile, that drop did come back in. Uh, Hydras were gone, but uh, some Ling's... Uh, Came back, a spawning pool was picked off and is being remade now at the natural. That drop is still there, so that can come back and backstab at some point. Probably when this push uh, is knocking at perhaps the third. I think that's where he's going with this. He does have another force uh, clearing creep on this side. This is really nice, kind of drawing the Zerg army away. Meanwhile, this drop does come over to the natural. Uh, it will get picked off, but it is uh, pulling Zerg out of position for this force, which uh, is pretty sizable. Uh, uh, Nistic has done a good job replacing some of this creep, but... Uh, this is a nice corridor that uh, these tank, this tank line has set up. Like, you can pick off a couple of the tanks, maybe, but how do you get through all of them? And uh, 
Psyche is really bringing the heat, and uh, he will pick up that first game for Psyx. I thought Cuddle Bear was a Terran. He's playing Protoss? I'm so confused today. Well, next we are scheduled to have a PVZ between Cuddle Bear and Ravage. That said, I thought that, uh, I thought that Cuddle Bear was a Terran player. Our next map will be on Lost and Found. Looks like, uh, okay, there's the invite. Just waiting for uh, players to enter lobby and uh... <laughs> yeah, ten minutes, ten tanks. <laughs> Very much so, Patka. <laughs> One tank for every minute of the game. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> what a what a composition. Just all the tanks. Everything, all the tanks. It's really abusing that map. Cuddle Bear is stuck in another tournament at the moment. Oh my. Like, uh, Psyche has a decision to make. I'm not sure what is, uh, what is going to happen here. But, uh, we have a couple moments to ourselves to talk about life in StarCraft and uh, why Carbot Zerglings are cute. All the things.
Oh my goodness. Okay. So it looks like we are probably going to go to our ace match as Cuddle Bear is unavailable to play his game. see if there's any confirmation on that. Okay. Looks like it will be happening on Darkness Sanctuary as our next map. And... We'll have to wait a moment to see who our last players are for tonight. Sentinel. A, a tank a minute can be uh, a little bit obnoxious. But uh, all's well that ends well. Okay, we're going to get Darkness Sanctuary. Our players will be someone will be playing, I'm sure. I just don't know who that someone is. I think we are sending in Ravage because Ravage is a Zerg and Darkness Sanctuary is not good for Protoss. Uh, I don't know how Psyche feels about playing Darkness Sanctuary. Terran can kind of go either way, I feel, depending on their playstyle. Um, I am not playing Ravage. So hopefully we will uh, find out in just a moment who Rise has decided to send in as their last player of the night. Alrighty, let's see, anything in chat I missed? Uh, well, while I'm waiting, score right now is 2-2. Two to two. This is a best of 5, so uh, this being the ace match, uh, we'll um, rest on this game. for me to tend to at the moment. And... Looks like we're still just waiting, but, uh... Yes, I, my Stitchling is trying to escape. 
I, 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 yes, that is, that, that was, yes. <laughs> um, I, I thought it, it just felt like it was popping out more. I, I was very, very pleased with the, uh, aesthetics. <laughs> yes, my, my stitchling wants to get out. It, 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 it wants to run. It wants to scamper off somewhere and wreak havoc doing who knows what. <laughs> Building cannons. <laughs> Stitchlings build cannons, right? <laughs> That's how the world works, right? Stitchlings build cannons. <laughs> okay, Cham Cork or Nistic is going to be their last player. So we're gonna see a ZVZ on Darkness Sanctuary. Okay, I, I'm, I am, I'm okay with this. I, 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 like, I wouldn't want to see a Protoss here, just because I would feel very bad for that Protoss. <laughs> And, uh... I don't think they sent in a Terran today, so... They, uh, really only had... Protoss and Zerg to work with. Um... Oh, and it's cross spawns. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, spawning in the bottom left as the green zerg representing Psy X, it is Ravage. And in the northeast, as the purple zerg representing Rise, it is Nistic. Also known as Champ Cork. Did do the overlays, right? Yes, okay. <laughs> Those things you're always asking yourself as a as a caster. Okay. Mystic is going to go for the fast pool. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, we're gonna get a hatch gas pool coming out of Ravage, and I think because it is cross spawns, this is good for Ravage. Um I think, were they in close spawning locations? Like, um, I don't know. Probably horizontal spawns are, cl are horizontal spawns closer than? I, I don't even know if horizontal or vertical spawns are closer. I don't play this map. <laughs> but, um, were they not cross spawn, uh, the faster pool would like, defensive or offensive, it makes more sense. Uh, but being cross spawn, it's a long rush distance, and um, really isn't going to do too much for Champ Cork. Uh, that said, it's not a huge economic loss. Um, so, slight early game advantage economically for Ravage. Uh, but uh, we'll see how this game develops from here. Uh, speed is underway for both players. Uh, Cham Corks will be faster as he does have that faster pool, and uh, he's gonna get a Baneling Nest. So this is gonna get very explosive very soon. There is a Baneling Nest going down for Ravage, but by the time the Ling Bane of Mystic gets to the south side of the map, uh, I, it, it, it may be a moot point who's is faster. Uh, we shall see. Uh, there is a quick third going down for Ravage. He's probably just going to use this for additional ling um, production as I anticipate this game getting very explosive uh, in a moment. Uh, these Zerglings are kind of passing and... Uh, oh, there's actually a lot of Zerglings coming out for Chamcork 
pair of Banelings are going to be morphed on this ramp, uh, but, um, whew, uh, not wanting to play with fire is Nistic. Uh, instead, he is going to settle for the two queens. The Banelings are going to come down the ramp, uh, and they will usher Nistic out of here for the time being. And, uh, things are stabilizing. Uh, things looked a little bit scary for a second, but, um... Only losing two drones. Uh, it's not the end of the world uh, for either player, really. Um, advantage still... Uh, supply advantage still in Ravage's favor. Um, kind of poking up, seeing if there's anything... Uh, at this base here. Uh, Banelings just now completing for uh, Cham Cork, and we're gonna get back to that Ling Bane. Okay, uh, running past the Banes of Nistic, uh, but not really finding much with his own Banes, uh, having to dodge the Banelings, and we'll get on top of that Queen, but uh, the Banelings will save her. Is there a creep tumor here that died? <laughs> I wonder how that happened. Maybe a painting exploded over the creep tumor? Um, hmm, okay. And... Uh, there aren't enough lings here to protect these banelings. So, but uh, the painlings will complete and defend themselves, I suppose. Behind this, Ravage has added to his drone count just a little bit here and there. And, uh, the queen count is getting up there for Cham Cork. But, uh... Oh, horizontal is closer. Thank you. Well, uh, my, my question was whether horizontal or vertical spawns are closer. Um... Of course, the diagonal is the longest hypotenuse and whatnot. Um, but, uh, trying to get these queens as there's... Okay, gonna go for the drones instead as that's more guaranteed damage. Gets two, and... Uh, finding a couple more drones, but, uh, the Banelings will defend for, uh, Cham Cork. Uh, there is a Roach Horn down for, um, Ravage. No Roach Horn just yet. Or, uh, Spire for, uh, Cham Cork. Gonna finally take that third, uh, actually getting a fourth at the same time. Uh, probably realizing that needs to do something to catch- Oh, there is a f Roach Warren. What am I talking about? Ah, uh, gosh. Highly observant. Highly observant. Okay. So, the game is- kind of panned out of this uh, Ling Bane phase of the game. Both players kind of agreeing that they're not going to get a whole lot done anymore with those Lings and Banelings. Um, we will still see them here and there, of course, as they never really leave the game entirely, I guess. I mean, th th there's always the harass potential of Lings, I, I mean to say. Uh, and, of course, Banelings, because you have Lings. But, um, uh, the majority of the fighting is shifted into that Roach War stage. Uh, we will see if, uh, what additional tech is added on to those Roach War and, uh, Roaches, um, or if we're just gonna see Roach Rav, uh, exclusively. So... 
So Ravage is going to posture at this uh, base here. There's a healthy number of Banelings, but not really finding the connections. But uh, okay, they actually do remove enough of the Banelings of Ravage that the Lings can now wrap around the Roaches and clean that up with relative ease. Uh, creep Tumors are going to go out for Nistic. And uh, it's a healthy Ling force here. Uh, I'd like to see a couple Banelings uh, to lick this up as most of these are bruised uh, pretty badly. There are in fact two Banelings. So uh, as long as... Oh, actually... Okay, there's one! Uh, but the Lings are still here. Gonna start working on those drones. Uh, there's more Lings trickling in. And uh, lots of Banelings. Five drones do go down in the end. For Ravage, his own fourth is nearly complete. And the aggression is going to probably swing the other way. The Ravage is, um... Wait a second here. Is Nistic still playing Ling Bane? Yeah, he's like playing melee style. He's got mutas. Okay, so these Roach Ravagers from Chamcork are like largely defensive, I want to say. Like, just to s slow down an attack from Ravage. If he gets mutas out, um, it's not like that is a win can or basically it's gonna give him a lot of map control and um, at this present moment Ravage doesn't really have an answer to the mutas there aren't that many mutas yet though uh, the queen count is pretty high here so I think Nistic can hold this Ugh. That's not good. So... I guess the good thing about this is... Oh, he actually already has Hydras. Okay, he's fine. <laughs> I, I was worried that he didn't have a Hydra list then, but he has Hydras already. He just needed to get some units together. Actually, I don't know if he has enough units. I, I think this counterattack is hitting faster than he was anticipating. Oh. Hmm. Well, there's only two mutas now. <laughs> so two mutas is not that scary. Uh, well, actually, if you have no army, any army is scary. Uh, he has a couple roaches. He's going to lose his fourth with the piles uh, coming down. And these drones are going to die as well. A bit unfortunate. Uh, I think at this point, advantage goes to Nistic. Um, those mutas... Really, uh, catching Ravage in an awkward position. They didn't really, like, the numbers weren't that high, but allowed him to hold, and um, it was kind of a tempo thing, I want to say. Now, these upgrades are definitely funny. Um,. As I think it's specific, definitely specific to this style. I just that that was kind of the only tell I had that we weren't looking at roaches from uh, from Cham Cork. Uh, okay, um, Cham Cork is taking his fifth now, and Ravage is just re-establishing his fourth. So, I'm a little bit worried for Ravage. This game started out so well for him, but uh, it took too many losses trying to attack into Nistic, and the Mutas, like, they didn't do that much, but they did what they needed to do, which was defend. And now the Muta flock is fairly high. There's only one Spore Crawler here, and it will go down. The Queen is gone, not available for the Transfuse. Uh, Hydra's trickling in. Uh, there are lurkers 
um, as I suppose Ravage feels behind and needs to cut his uh, save on um, ground defense, so Luckers are probably going to be the most cost efficient way to do that. So he's going to play a Hydra Lurker style um, for the time being. I feel like he's been forced into this. Um, but uh, the Mutas are swinging around. Uh, Mystic wants this base, but the Hydras are just sitting here. So I, I think he's going to have to come back to that another day. Maybe... Oh, gosh. Oh, my. Oh, my. So, Mystic is setting up for a two-prong assault, and he's keeping this Hydra Lurker force very well occupied while the Ling Ravager force swings over to this base. And it is huge! As uh, Ravage comes over to defend this fourth base, the Mutas are going to swing back in. Fortunately, Ravage has his uh, Hydras back in time. I think he split his army a little bit, so uh, it was never completely out of position. And now uh, Ravage feels like this is his window. Uh, he has to get something done. He's fighting in the middle of the map um, and taking... Ah, I think that went... Okay for him. Um, like he didn't lose that. Oh, his hydra count is actually dangerously low. Um, so he needs reinforcing hydras um, very quickly. He does have them coming across the map now, as he uh, is positioning for this. Uh, oh, I, I don't, don't know if he knows about the fifth base, but yeah, I, I feel like he needs to get damage. He's looking for that damage. Bow is going down, uh, but there are a lot of roaches here, and and Mystic will take the ace game. Well, that concludes this uh, ATL match. Uh, thank you for watching. Let me see if there is anything else I should... Uh... Oh, yes. Uh, tomorrow, there will be... A ZVP show match, uh, Psyx Pro Series between Hino and Zion. Uh, ZVP. If I said that, I don't remember. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know where my brain is today. But uh, there's that tomorrow. Monday probably will be the ATL EU Amateur. Uh, third place match for the Yankees, and then Friday will be the most valuable Masters in Clan tournament, uh, and yes, those are my announcements for the end of this cast. I will see you guys next time.